Good morning, everyone, dear friends and saunterers. Here's Pops to say hello to everyone who's missed Pops. Say hello, Pops. We have a studio audience today. So um, we're on Proverbs chapter three, and I am going to. Good morning, Michael. I'm going to just do the first section up until verse 12 simply because there's so much content in it I don't think I can squish it all in. Good morning Hayes and Pete and Julie, Kathy. Uh, so let's pray. Lord Jesus we thank you for another lovely day. We thank you for all that you want to do today with us. Lord we thank you for all that you've called us to and all that you want to reveal to us even now in these few moments as we look at your word. And so we ask, Lord, you speak to us. Holy Spirit, speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The dog is digging a hole in the sofa right now. <laughs> For reasons best known to herself. Good morning, Karen and Kev and Adrian. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 3 then. He says, My son, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace. They will add to you. Good morning, Chris, Tracy Ann and Chris and Ruth and Mike and Francis. Nice to see you guys. Um, happy birthday, Mike. Many happy returns. Um, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favour and good success in the sight of God and man. So, right. Remember again, um, this is Solomon talking to his son, maybe a real son, maybe a rhetorical son like you and I become his sons for the purpose of the argument. But you could also say that he's speaking in the first person. He's speaking really as God speaking and he's saying, my son. And so if we just imagine this is God speaking to us, God the Father speaking to us, my son and my daughter, do not forget my teaching. And then the word there is Torah, which is the word, the word we have for law, i.e. the law of Moses. Good morning, Caroline and Marion and Fliss. And so he's saying, don't forget my word. Don't forget my law, my commands, my teaching. Let, but let your heart keep my commandments and I was thinking about we can do obedience to God from two kind of starting points really can't we we can do obedience to God in a reluctant surly kind of oh well I've got to do this because I'm a Christian I've got no choice kind of thing or we can do it from that heart that loves him and wants to serve him good morning Fran um, that wants to serve him and honor him in everything and so we it's a joyful um thing where where we're fully engaged with what we're doing and and so that but in and this is the kind of thing that the that solomon's encouraging his son to do to get his heart involved in it and to let his heart be already obedient before his actions back that up and so that is true integrity where our heart and our mouth and our actions are all in alignment and we're all in, they're all in agreement with each other. And so we're not saying one thing, thinking another. And you know what I'm saying? So we're, there's that lovely, beautiful integrity of heart. And so he's saying, my son, let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace. They will add to you. And he's kind of promising long life as he's <laughs> if we started advertising this now, we'd have the advertising standards people down on us because they'd say, well, how can you prove that um, honouring God and obeying his commandments gives you a long life? And then we'd have to wheel in people like Jeff Winkley and <laughs> and Mike yourself and others to say, look at these guys, long life and length of days and peace they've added to us. And, and so really it's looking back on our lives, we can say, well, God, you did. You brought peace into all my situations in all the challenging parts of my life, you were bringing peace. Good morning, Bev and Israel, and and the other Bev as well, two Bevs. So he says, let steadfast love and faithfulness, sorry, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, 
so you will find favour and good success in the sight of God and man. And so if you remember from the Psalms, we looked at the word steadfast love, the word that is translated um, steadfast love, and it's the Hebrew word hesed, and it means that kind of loving kindness, that faithfulness, that unchanging, unflinching, beautiful, consistent, steady love from God that is totally 100% reliable. It never changes. It never ebbs and flows. It's consistent. It's steady. And he says, let that not depart from you. And faithfulness. He says, so what he's saying is don't kind of stray outside of God's love. But he's also saying, actually, emulate that love and kind of operate in that love yourself and kind of let that become part of the hallmark of your life is this consistent steadfast love for people for God um for your family for the people around you and so on he says let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you so let's not become unfaithful Faithfulness is a beautiful thing and it's the the basis of marriage. It's what makes marriage really work. And you need the two things in a marriage. You need that steadfast love and you need faithfulness. It's got to be both of those things. And so if you want your marriage to work, work on both of those things. Work on love and making that steadfast, steady, consistent demonstration of love, but also live it out faithfully and keep the covenant and watch over your heart so it doesn't stray so he says let not let not hesed and faithfulness forsake you bind them around your neck so he's like saying remember we were talking about how he says let the you know wisdom be like a treasure and seek it like you would look for treasure and now he's saying bind it around your neck it's like keep it close to you keep it on you like a piece of jewelry you would wear a necklace something valuable around your neck it's kind of like I want this close to me and it's also beautiful and it makes me look attractive. I don't have a necklace, by the way, but just girls. Yeah, I know you do. Um, and so we wear them to make ourselves look beautiful. And these qualities are beautiful qualities. Steadfast love, faithfulness. They're beautiful qualities. Keep them close. Wear them as a necklace around your neck. Good morning, Raymond and Peter. Um. And he says, write them on the tablet of your heart. So God, there's a there's a wonderful promise, I think, in Jeremiah, where God promises that he will write his words on the hearts of his people. And they'll, and there's that that sense coming through in the later prophets where God will inscribe his law literally on our hearts. So we're not keeping it as a kind of, oh, I forgot to keep the law. It's actually the law is written inside me. I've actually got this thing, this word of God inscribed in my heart. I know what pleases the Lord. I know what his values are. And so I've stored those things up in my heart and I've written them down in my heart so that I'm consistent and able to to respond automatically to in a way that pleases God. Remember yesterday, we were talking about building neurological pathways in our in our brains and we need to build those pathways where we habitually keep God's God's word and walk in his ways and we habitually honor him and please him in the way we live. And so we've kind of we've built into our hearts and we've written his word in our hearts. We've allowed the Holy Spirit to inscribe them on the tablet of our hearts. One of the ways we do that, of course, is by reading it frequently, by memorising it, committing it to memory. And the more, of course, you read it, the more it sticks anyway. And so many people say to me, oh, I just can't remember anything I've read from the Bible. The, the way it works is the more you read it, the more it sticks. And you realise that actually as time goes on, you have got a deposit that it's, it's like a small bank account that's growing in credit. And every time you read God's word or listen to it preached, it sticks a bit more in your mind and in your heart. And this is so he's saying, write it on the tablet of your heart and then you will have. So let's read it all through. My son, do not forget my teaching, 
but keep, let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favour and good success in the sight of God and man. So he's saying, right, this will give you a long life. It will give you peace, but it will also enable you to find favour with God and with man and give you good success. Well, who, are, who among us does not want success? We want success, don't we? We want to do well in our work. We want to do well at school. We want to get good grades in, this, in our exams. That is very true, friend. The Holy Spirit can recall the word in a moment of need. And even if you think you've forgotten it, suddenly, boom, it comes back to you. And it comes back particularly well if you've put it in there in the first place. <laughs> Sometimes he just puts it in there and we've never even heard it before. And then we realise it is in the Bible. But usually he brings to our memory something that, is, that we've already read or heard. But here we go. So this is, we want success, don't we? We want success in our business. We want we want to do well at work. We want promotion. We want to get on well and have a decent standard of living. That is okay. That's a good thing to ask for. It's perfectly legitimate. But here we are. He's saying you will find favour and success if you honour this word and you keep it in your heart and you let it be inscribed on the tablet of your heart and you wear it around your neck and you hold to its values of love and faithfulness because they're the, as we found during through the Psalms, they are the underpinning, they're the sort of, they're the mainspring, if you like, of the heart of God. This steadfast love and faithfulness is the consistent theme throughout the Psalms. And it is just the nature and heart of God. And he's saying, if you keep these things, you will have favour and success in all you do. With God and with men. And, and it's one thing to get on well with your, your colleagues at work or your boss. And to have favour with men is another thing. And on another level altogether to have favour with God. Because he can open doors for you that your boss can't. He can give you access to people that your boss can never give you access to. And so his favour is a beautiful thing. Tremendous. So valuable. Verse five. Trust in the Lord. Here we go. Fridge magnet moment. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Gosh, this should be one of those words that is inscribed on our hearts, on the tablet of our heart. If you don't know it already, it's a really good one to commit to memory. Really simple. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. That word trust has there, used there has got so many meanings. It can mean literally being thrown on your back, kind of like careless, without a care in the world, just completely rested. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's not just, I'm not trying to make this happen in my head. I'm not trying to think myself into trust but I'm surrendering, I'm giving my heart over to him. I'm saying, God, I trust you. I throw myself onto you. I, And then he says, and don't lean. So there's this, there's this sense, don't lean on your own understanding, but throw yourself onto him. Throw yourself onto the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There's a moment if you're if you have ever, ever done any diving from a high diving board or any diving board, if you like. But there's this point where you're on the top of the diving board and you're literally absolutely terrified. And you're looking down and you think, I'm not even sure I'm going to hit this pool if I dive in it because it's so far away. I think I'll probably swerve off and land on the concrete somewhere. And you there's this moment of commitment, isn't there, where you pass top dead centre and your body is committed and you're on your way down. When I was with Raymond in India with Josh last year, um, last June, he, Raymond <laughs> took us to this water park and it's unlike a water park I've ever been to in England. And it had this slide that was so high. It was literally, it was like climbing a mountain, you know, to, by the time you got to the top, you're utterly exhausted because you climbed all these steps and you get to the top of this slide and there's one person there and he's the guy, he's the operator. And you see the, there's hardly anyone on it because it's so scary. 
and he literally makes you lie down and then he shoves you and it the, drops off at such an angle you think I'm gonna overshoot the slide and my body I'm gonna be the one exception that goes too far out of the <laughs> away from the surface of the slide and literally kind of carries on until I've become a pancake somewhere on the tarmac below and <laughs> it's just, there's this moment where you surrender your you lie back and put your hands like this and cross your feet and the guy slides you past the point of no return you literally terrified <laughs> and you're back as you go past this point of top dead you know of no return if you like once he's slid you 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 actually do part company with the surface that you're sliding on and you're like oh no i'm dead how am i going to explain this to anna when i don't get home you know and all this kind of thoughts go through your head and your body's literally hurtling at the speed of a bullet down this slide and whew, the next thing you're at the bottom <laughs> honestly terrifying but he's saying trust in the lord with all your heart is that moment where we say god i i i uh, it's over to you now I got, I'm, I've passed the point where I've got any control in this I've given I've handed it right over to you and so here we go Whew, down the slide and don't lean on your own understanding so the fact that my back had parted company with the surface that it was supposed to be sliding down I had to just trust that it that the person who designed this slide had tried it many many times with dead sheep or goats or whatever they do um, to Anyway, there we are. Story. Fun. But don't lean on your own understanding. Oh, gosh. Verse six. So very often we want to get our own understanding, sort of seizing control. My brother's got a car. Sorry, one other analogy. My brother's got a car. It's called a Tesla. It's a very fancy, posh, beautiful car. And it will drive itself. And so when you're on the motorway, it, it will very happily drive itself. It's got all these sensors. It knows where it is in relation to the car in front. If you put your indicator on without touching the steering wheel, it will wait for an opportune moment and then move out into the overtaking lane and overtake and come back in again by itself. But if you insist on getting hold of the steering wheel, it will let you. <laughs> Chris Dunman and... Does it say in Proverbs, women live longer than men? <laughs> oh dear, you're funny. Uh, anyway, so you can grab hold of the steering wheel and the car will let you take control again. But when, when we give over to God, we're giving over to something much, someone much more wise, much more clever, much more powerful, much more all seeing than we are. Why would we keep trying to grab the steering wheel and insist on bringing control back in? Let's, let's trust, let's get into the habit, build that lifestyle, because this is a lifestyle we're talking about. This is not a one-off occurrence. This is a lifestyle we're talking about. Let's build that lifestyle of surrender, giving over to him, even in those circumstances where we feel like we're out of control and we don't know, we can't see how this all plays out. Um, and trust that he's got it verse six in all your ways how many ways is that all our ways in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths be not wise in your own eyes fear the lord and turn away from evil it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones so let's just read the whole thing in context trust in the lord with all your heart do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him that word there is see him recognize him acknowledge that he's there doing it give one of the best ways we can acknowledge him is by thanking him when he moves and answers our prayers and when he steps in and protects us and helps us let's recognize it acknowledge it and he will make you straight your paths be not wise in your own eyes here's another one for the fridge fear the lord and turn away from evil it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones it's good for your body it's good for your whole being to be surrendered and yielded to him and to run after him and 
walk with him and acknowledge him and let, trust in him is very good for us. It's very bad for us to feel like we're constantly having to fight to be in control. It is too stressful. It's not good for uh, um, our blood pressure or any of those things. So anyway, we're soon there. You can see why I just wanted to do a few verses today. So it'll be healing to your flesh, refreshment to your bones. Verse 9, honour the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. Right pause honor the lord with your wealth now the word there for honor is um is oh gosh it means a whole stack of things it's very much it's from the it's the root word from which we get glory and it means weight kabaud is the or kavod is the word for glory and this is kavod or kavod or something it's very similar um word and it's to do with weight and honour and reputation, all of those things. And it's like he's saying, give glory to God with your wealth. Weigh out a significant sum of money, if you like, of your gold reserves and honour God with that. Let your, let my wealth, my substance, my, my reputation, all of those things be given over to honour and glory for to glorify God. And so he says, it's like recognising where it came from in the first place. So he's so this word there for honour literally means kind of recognising the honour that is due to God and giving of my wealth and my first fruits and my prosperity to God so that he that I'm not keeping all of this to myself, but I'm honouring it, honouring him with it by giving it over to him. Generosity is the currency of the kingdom of heaven and is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And one person's generosity is another person's answer to prayer and so on and so on. And when we give to the poor, we lend to the Lord. It's like we give. How do we give to God? Well, we give to those who are serving him, his servants who work for him um, and have no other income other than what they receive from serving him. Um, we, When we give to the poor, w the Bible says we're lending to the Lord and he will pay us back. It's an amazing thing. When we lay up treasure in heaven, it's like we're putting our wealth into eternal things, into projects that advance the kingdom of heaven. That's a good thing. When we alleviate poverty, that's a good thing. Um, giving is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and it's a way of honouring God with our wealth. So moving on, he says, honour the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. And then he promises something. He says, then your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vats will be bursting with wine. And it just works like that. If we're generous, God blesses us. We shouldn't do it to be blessed, but it is a product of being generous. And you look at generous people and they're very often, I, don't, I think they usually got enough for their own needs and to be continue being generous. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's kind of like, um, prime in the pump really it's just God's it just gets this whole cycle of God provision and blessing flowing when we give as well and we pour back into it anyway so in he this is a great promise isn't it your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine so if you're struggling to make ends meet and you think I just really it's not working for me I'm just not seeing prosperity coming into my life well just experiment with this a bit and say come on then God let's go on a journey a journey of generosity I'll start to give but please back me up <laughs> come with me on it don't cut me loose now God has promised that we can test him on this one which you can read in uh, Malachi anyway that's for another day but just to say if you're not if it's not working out for you just start and say come on then God let's do this Let's go on this journey together.
and see how we get on. Verse 11, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof is quoted in Hebrews. Discipline is is one of those things that reflects that somehow displays the heart of God, the father heart of God, even though it's perhaps not what we might prefer. Most of us would prefer God to just keep blessing us, showering his love on us, just giving us what we need easing our way through, filling us with the Holy Spirit, filling us with joy, filling us with peace and all of that lovely stuff. But he also says, yeah, Paul, but I'm actually going to discipline you as well because I'm your dad, I'm your father. And there are some things about you that are ugly, that don't reflect me at all. And I'm committed to getting you to look like Jesus in every respect, in every aspect of your life. And so the father comes lovingly, to shape me and his shaping sometimes is painful and so the the admonition here from Solomon to his son the encouragement that sort of word from a dad to a son is don't despise the Lord's discipline D um, <laughs> Pete says he doesn't like being told off none of us like being told off it is not natural for us to like being told off but he says don't despise or in Hebrews, I think it says, don't make light of the Lord's discipline when, um, or be weary. And it can wet, you can sort of think, oh, I'm weary. I'm worn out with this. Actually, don't, because it's towards something. It's bringing something about. In Hebrews, it says, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness for those who've been trained by it. So when God disciplines us, it's to get us somewhere. Right. Athlete. Training. They go out in the mornings and they put those miles in on the track when it's pouring with rain, when it's dark and when nobody else is about because everyone else has got far too much sense to be up so early. And there's this athlete out there pounding the tracks, putting in those track miles and um, and it's painful. It's not it's not kind of pleasant. And they might eat when some, you know, obviously the higher up the food chain you go with athletics and all that kind of stuff, you get your own trainer and they'll be there with a stopwatch and they'll be like your dad saying, well, come on, let's do better. Let's do better. There's the phone. Gosh. A anyway, so the Lord reproves him whom he loves. If you're calling me, I'm not answering right now because I'm busy. <laughs> So the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. So we've got to kind of take the gender issues out of this. It's son, daughter, it's interchangeable. So my daughter, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves her whom she loves as a father, the daughter in whom he delights. And so it's the same. It works. Wow, this is just up to verse 12. We're going to stop there and we'll finish off tomorrow. Um, so awesome, beautiful. <laughs> Have an amazing day. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, there's so much in this in this book. It's just like so meaty. It's just absolutely loaded with meaning and stuff for us. And so, Lord, I pray today that you'll speak to us, Lord, particularly on these issues of trust in you, leaning back into you, not looking, not seizing the wheel while we're still being driven by you, Lord, and taking charge again. Lord, let us honour you with our wealth. God, let us not be wise in our own eyes, let, but let's ask you for wisdom. God, come on. Lord, we look to you. You're our help and our strength. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Amen. Have an amazing day. The phone. <laughs> Lots of love. Talk to you soon.